Welcome back to this series where you are creating a simple dashboard from scratch using Figma. In this video, I'll show you how to set up the structural foundation of the dashboard inside Figma and why that's the key to clean and scale design. Designing without a grid is like building with a Lego on a wooden table. You can stack the pieces, but nothing really aligns. It's wobbly, messy and hard to scale. Now, place those same pieces on a LEGO base plate and everything changes. You have structure, consistent spacing and the confidence to build bigger. That's exactly what a layout grid does in Figma. It creates an invisible system behind your design that makes everything feel cohesive and more professional. Let's start by creating our main frame. So press F to select the frame tool or you can go here to the toolbar and select this frame icon. And here on the right hand side, you have already a set of default templates that you can use. So let's select desktop with 1440 pixels width. And usually if this was, if we were building a landing page, we'd simply apply a 12 column grid directly here in our canvas. So if I click here, I select columns and I put it 12 with some big margin and that will be working for this case, but dashboards work differently. They have a side navigation, dynamic content and different zones that require a more modular layout. So here's what I like to structure when I'm doing some SAS applications. So I'll delete the layout grid and here in the main frame, I will create a sidebar with 240 pixels. Let me change here the fill so that you see what I'm doing. And here I will drag to 240. You can do it this by the drag, or you can go directly here and type the values. And this is our sidebar frame. And then I will create another frame that will contain all the objects or components that will work in the dashboard. So press again F and here I will click and drag to have my container framer. So let me change the fill again. I will change the color. Pay attention that usually it creates the frame inside of the sidebar. So click and drag outside of it. And as you can see, you can now see the, the color I was applying. That's why it's important that this phase to work with these random colors so that you notice the differences between frames. And then I will apply the 12 column grid here. So you already saw how we can select the grids. So with the frame selected, go here to the layout grid and hit this plus that will add this grid. And you can see that we have the grid, we have columns and we have rows. For this case, we will use columns and instead of five, we will use 12 columns. And why 12 columns? Because it's a classic system used in most websites and SaaS applications. And it divides perfectly your components by two, three, four or six columns. That makes it super flexible and easy to align content without losing that freedom. Then we can also change here the margins to 32 and the gutter to 24. And also here the type you can leave it stretch, but you can, depending on what use case you are doing, you can align to left, right, center. But in this case, let's stretch because we will use this afterwards for the responsive design. And this grid will help us align cards, charts, tables, and anything else we want to add later. So if I go to the example that we are creating, the dashboard, you may see that all the components snaps to each column and everything looks consistent. You just look at this and feel, okay, everything is aligned. And that's the beauty of using grids. So now that you know how to add grids, what if we want to adapt to different screen sizes and make it responsible? Let's use variables and modes to create our breakpoints. Modes are only available on paid plans. So if you are using a free plan, you need to create variables for all status instead of modes. And we have already done this in the last videos. So the idea is pretty much the same. So let's click outside our frame and head over here to variables. Here in the three dots, 
let's create a new collection. We can call it layout grid. And let's start by creating our number variable. So here it will be our breakpoint. We want to create the breakpoints for desktop, mobile and tablet. And I will hit this plus to create already the three modes. So my mode one will be desktop and it will have 1440 pixels. Then it will be tablet and let's use 8334. And the third one, it's mobile. Let's use 390. And these are our breakpoints. Then let's create another number variable for columns. So the desktop, we want 12 columns. For tablet, we want six. And for mobile, four. Then next is the gutter. So for desktop, we use 24. Tablet, 20. Mobile, 16. And we still need to add the margins. So another one for margins. 32 for tablet 24 and for mobile 16. Let's also create a number variable for the sidebar width because we want that on desktop it remains fixed, but when it changed to tablet it shrinks a bit and on mobile maybe it disappears because we will not use a sidebar navigation, but we will use a burger menu instead. So head over here to create a variable number and call it sidebar width and for desktop it's 240 that we already created for tablet 72 so we will display only icons instead of icon with labels and mobile we can keep it as zero so then we can close this and let's apply the variables to our properties in our components so here to the sidebar we can set here in the layout width instead of 240 go to sidebar width that it will be also 240 because it was the, the variable we created and here let's select our content frame and go here to the layout grid and here the columns let's apply variable columns the margin to margin and the same for gutter okay now we just need to do one more step that is here in the main frame select here the width and put it breakpoint associate with the breakpoint and it's pretty much it then in the main frame we also have this apply variable mode if we click we get this layout grid the collection that we created and we have here desktop tablet and mobile modes which are the modes that we just created and we can select desktop and nothing will happen because it's we are already working on desktop but if we change to tablet you see that something happened to the frame so the frame reduces or shrink the width and the same for mobile and this is pretty much fun but as you can see the grid and the sidebar is not updating and for that we need to use auto layout i'm not going too deep in this topic right now because the next video is all about auto layout and responsiveness in your components so right now i'll keep it very basic so that you can understand the importance of having grids and making all of this responsive looking back to our main frame the desktop one you might see that you have here the icon that it says that it's a frame and if we press shift a or right click and add auto layout you might see that the icon changes because now it's not a frame only it has the property of auto layout applied next we need to add some properties or change some properties in our frames the navigation sidebar is fine because we set the width already in our variables but the content frame we need to change here the width because right now it's fixed to 1200 pixels but we want to fill container this means that if i expand or shrink my frame it will follow along the container so now if i go press and select again my desktop frame and go here to the layout grid that we created before 
our modes and change from desktop to tablet, you now see that the grid changed. Instead of 12 columns, we have now six columns and the navigation sidebar shrinked. The same will ap apply for mobile. We now don't have the sidebar, it's set to zero and the grid is, it has four columns. How cool is this? And this creates a foundation for responsive behavior and it will pay off later when you prototype or end off your design to developers. Even if you haven't built any components yet, this layout will already help you. A well-structured frame with a responsive grid saves time, avoids design depth and gives you confidence to scale your design. Next up, we're diving into Figma Auto Layout and I'll show you how to make your elements truly smart, scalable and adaptable across your dashboard. While you are waiting for that, check out the previous video in this series where we cover text and color variables or explore the full Figma for Beginners playlist to follow along from the start. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Have a great day.